So what we're going to do is we're here to expose it, let people tell their story, and let them, let everybody in the public see the horrors of the court system in Suffolk County, New York. Long Island Backstory with Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs. Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs. Welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory, where we're filming at the Alt T Studios in Hot Park, New York. Got a great show for you today. Uh, my next guest is Eric Steinberg, and he's going to talk about something that uh, I found very interesting. I actually, uh, he spoke at, uh, at a group that I went to uh, about an organization that he's a national board member on, which is Volunteers for Israel. And I absolutely I found the program fascinating and I have a lot of things on my bucket list and I've been checking them off and now this is one that I added to the bucket list and you know at 50 years old you don't add many things to your bucket list. So just a little bit about my next guest Eric Steinberg. Um, again he was a national executive board member of the Volunteers for Israel. Uh, he was raised uh, in Brooklyn. I guess a lot of people from Long Island raised in Brooklyn. Uh, then he moved out to Suffolk County where him and his wife of almost 50 years have lived and raised their family. Eric was a teacher in New York City for over 30 years and in 2000 was awarded Industrial Arts Teacher of the Year. In 2001, he was awarded the New York City Regional Industrial Arts Teacher of the Year and he is now, I'll put in quotes, retired because he's doing all this work for the Volunteers for Israel. For his 55th birthday, his wife gave him a, a trip, uh, which was a gift to Israel to volunteer for, the vol for this program that we're going to talk about today. And I guess this is where the second start, uh, part of this, this story begins. Eric, welcome, yes. welcome to the show. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for coming. So first of all, let's just tell the audience, what is Volunteers for Israel? Volunteers for Israel was organized and started in 1982. Uh, Israel was involved in a war at that time, and it was just at the harvest time in Israel and so many of the reservists that needed to fight the war uh, had to leave the, the, the uh, fields and it was decided to come to, someone had to come to America to uh, see if we could get people, volunteers, to come and help pick the harvest. And we, we had over 600 volunteers instantly come to the program and ever since then they never stopped it and they asked for our help. Uh, we, we've given uh, throughout the world, all of the volunteers that have gone, we've saved the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, over 400,000 hours uh, of free time to let the reservists and the soldiers trained to do a better job in defending the state of Israel. Great. So now we're going to, we're going to show this, this clip, uh, which is a few minutes long, but I want to show that because it shows a visual of what, what you actually do when you go over there, and then we're going to come back and, and we'll talk about that. So let's roll that clip. Great. Hi, I'm Larry Alsted. I'm from Wonsaw, New York. Hi, I'm Carol Hoffer from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Hi, my name is Rena Epstein. I live in Jerusalem. I'm 19 years old, uh, brand new in the Army. Shalom, my name is Linda. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Hello, I'm Lorraine Baskin, and I hail from San Francisco. Hi, my name is Rich Gare. I'm from Longwood, Florida. Oh, hello, my name is Danielle. I'm one of the Malikot. Um, I'm from, now I live in Chadera, where my father lived. Hello, my name is Honey Amato. I'm from Beverly Hills, California. I'm uh, Major Boy Shapiro. I'm living on Golan Heights uh, in Katsurin. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm a sergeant. My name is Tiran. I'm the commander of Sarel. I, I think I wanted to see Israel in a little bit different way than normal tourism and kind of live among some of the people of Israel. I felt that being here physically, being part of the land, the culture, the people, would be hopefully good for Israel and certainly gratifying as deeply as possible for me as a person. Why am I here is a real hard question to answer because it brings up a lot of emotions. And I felt that it was easy to write a check, but it would be 
a whole other experience to actually come and do something, physically do something. And I decided this was the right time in my life to take an opportunity to do this adventure. I came because I think um, the well-being of us in the diaspora is linked inextricably with the well-being of the State of Israel. Well, a lot of people come with all different reasons every time I hear a new story. Um, I think I think it's amazing, first of all, just leaving everything behind, just coming. I wanted to get here in a more meaningful way, I guess, to do a mitzvah uh, and to see the part of Israel that the average tourist doesn't see. In my opinion, Israel is a country and the idea for the army is yours, not less than mine, because you have a born right uh, for it. And it's important to come. I think uh, the fact that people come and take time off uh, of their own life, uh, take a break, and yes, pay a lot of money to come to Israel and join us, wear our uniforms, and uh, be part of our, just be part of the whole thing. I think it's a really brave thing to do, and I think it's a noble thing. I think Israel's on the forefront of the fight against um, radical Islam for the entire West. And since I feel our safety as Americans is also linked to what happens here in Israel. As they come and they contribute so much. And it's just, sometimes it makes us feel like that what we're doing is basically worthwhile. It really helps the other soldiers see that people care. And I think that's one of the most, the most greatest things that uh, Sarel brings people from out and, and does here. This trip is my first payment of many on an insurance policy. An insurance policy to ensure that Israel will survive and always be there for the generations that come after me. The volunteers are coming from all over the world and coming to work in bases. Some of them are thrilled from appreciation to the, to the volunteers. Very amazing people that helped us a lot to prepare the things that we need uh, to be prepared in, uh, for the future of the security of Israel. All the commanders in each bases are fighting for volunteers and begging for volunteers from all over. This experience has been everything that I thought it would be and more. I've met wonderful people and we're doing good things. It's a heartfelt, heartfelt feeling to be knowing that you're helping the troops here and making a difference. We're really making a difference. I really feel like we're making a difference. Thank you very much for coming. We enjoyed a lot. Yeah, all I can say is big thanks. I recommend it wholeheartedly to anyone that really wants to have an experience and adventure of a lifetime. Being a brother, even though you're from America or wherever. So thank you very much. It means a lot. Okay, so in that clip we saw what, what people are actually doing. I mean, this, you know, you make it seem like they're in the field, but these are, they're, I guess that was back then. Now you're actually working hand in hand with, with the uh, Israeli army. You're wearing uniforms. You well, le let me just correct that. We don't, we work alongside of the IDF and we wear work uniforms, not army uniforms per se. We're not allowed to wear them. We're citizens of the American of, of America, and we cannot wear a military uniform. There are two types of soldiers in, in Israel. There's the fighter, and there's the logistical worker or soldier. We work with the logistical type of soldier. We put medicine uh, bags together. When I was on one base, we would fill up and throw out outdated medical supplies and at four o'clock the truck would come pick up all of the things that we put into the medical bags that were good and they shipped them off to Gaza so we really felt needed and and the job was great other times we do so many other type of, of uh, work and we what, work what, what, are, what are some of the other things that, uh, that the volunteers would do? We could do cleaning of, of the base. We could do painting. We could put together communication packages. We could clean radios, put them back together again. I've worked on tanks. I've worked on the northern border of Lebanon uh, on a forward observation uh, unit. And we were filling sandbags for the, for the uh, trenches there. 
and, and it, some of it is easy work and some of it is not, but it is so fulfilling. And the important thing about the program is not necessarily only the work that we do on the base. So we don't know, when we, we go, we pay our own airfare. The Israeli army pays for our room and board for five days a week, and we live on the base those five days a week, and then for Shabbat, we have to leave the base. No, no one stays on the base. But once we get to the Ben Gurion Airport, we learn what base we're gonna be. We could be north, east, south, or west. We don't know for security reasons. Uh, and once we get to the base, we do many, many different activities uh, with the soldiers, with the, uh, sometimes we work on a base where there are fighters and, and we clean the rifles and we take them apart and scrub them out and we oil them and then we put them back together again. Uh, it, it's, it's so re rewarding, but that's not the important thing for me at least. I like it and I feel good, but I do it to show the soldier that there are people in this world that love and care about you and we boost their morale. A lot of, t I tell people when we go, don't sit in the mess hall with the uh, group that we're with. Sit with the soldiers, go meet them, talk to them. They're looking at us and they don't know why we're there. Once we tell them why we're there, they think that we're Meshuggah mm -hmm. for going over from America, uh, but, but they understand. And once they understand, they become our friends. They, they love it. it. We tell them that there are people that, that care about is, Israel and the soldiers that, that fight to protect Israel. And, and that's the rewarding part. And next visit, when I go to another base, I hope to be able to go to many bases and tell this to the, to the volunteers that are there. Do not sit with the group. Mingle with the soldiers. I get emails from them. I get birthday wishes from them. It's just a great, great feeling. So when I first heard you speak about it, and they said, oh, they're going to talk about volunteers for Israel. And so first I thought, well, who's going to go there and take a chance to get shot? You know, all these old Jews are going to go there. They're going to get blown away. Excuse and then, me, <laughs> excuse me. I'm not old. <laughs> and then, I, then my second thing was, well, is this a, something just for rich people to say, well, I went there to help the Israeli army, but I'm really not helping them. I'm really, you know, I'm just going there because I have money and something to do. But you really are valuable to the army, as, as you explained to me, that just, you know, freeing up that time. So they're not doing these, uh, you know, these other duties. They could be out there, you know, actually fighting and, yes. and defending the country. Yes. So before you go on the trip, is there any preparation? Is there classes? Or do you just say, hey, somebody Googles volunteer for Israel, you, you fill out the form, boom, and then three weeks later you're on a plane to Israel? No. Okay. There is a process. We first get the phone call. We talk to them a few moments on the phone, and we tell them a little bit about the program, maybe three minutes about the program. Then we set up an interview. The interview can be any place that, that's convenient for both parties. And then we, we see the person in front of us. We want to make sure that, that this person is not on a, wearing a crutch or walking with a, a cane. They have to do jobs once they get there. They can't just say, well, I don't feel well and this, that, and the other thing. They have to be able to. Otherwise, the rest of the group has to pick up for them. So that's not what we want. Once we do that, we tell them a little bit, and then I tell all of the, the ambassadors that we call that, that speak to the people, uh, go tell them about a day in the life of a volunteer. Once they're there, once they get to Ben Gurion, then they get on a bus, and then they go to their base. It could be five hours sitting in Ben Gurion in whole groups, and then you, you divide it up, and uh, you're meeting people sometimes when you go many times, you see the same people and, and we're friends now. Then you get to the base and uh, you get to your barrack and some people uh, think that there is a therapeutic mattress on, on the beds, you, you know, this thick. And I tell them, when I speak to them, I say, well, it's not that thick 
and I start talking and mm -hmm. I start talking and I say it's probably half the thickness of this but I can't go closer because then I'm going <laughs> to touch m my fingers. You're not in the Ritz Carlton. No, no, or the ben uh, King David Hotel. Okay. Uh, but but you do and you make do with what you have. And I tell them what to bring, and I try to prepare them as best as I can to be prepared. All the meals are kosher. There are three meals a day. You get served breakfast which is usually an Israeli salad, cottage cheese, maybe chocolate pudding, sometimes coffee, but they might not have milk, so you use chocolate milk if they have that. <laughs> um, and what's ever left from breakfast is served at night. So you know what you're gonna get at night. The big meal is lunch, and dependent on the base, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not as great, but they have PXs on the bases, so you can go get some snacks if you want to. So the, the cost is, what's the cost? Is it just the airfare? The airfare, and then the, 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 for Shabbat, you have to find a hotel, a hostel, VFI, uh, and Sarel, which is the umbrella organization in Israel that places us. Uh, they have discounts at certain uh, hotels. You could live on the beach, you could go to family. I have family, I'm lucky, so I go to them. Right. So I guess the people watching it, uh, the, the question people are going to ask is, we're Americans. I was born here. We love our country. I love Israel, too. But I guess the question is, why would somebody volunteer for Israel and why not volunteer for our country, America, first? OK, good question. Thank you. We have, That's why I'm the host. <laughs> <laughs> we have people from college age to 90 that go on the program the 90 year old is not going to serve in the military any longer they might have served when they were younger you're you're assuming that they don't but we do have a lot of people that served in the american army they're past the age of serving in the army so they say this is something good and there are people that that have not served in the military for medical reasons here whatever they were married uh, before uh, during the draft let's say so they go now um it, 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 it's so much different than if you were going as a tourist. Anyone could go as a tourist. Anyone could give donations to Israel. We could send our kids on pilgrimage. We could send them uh, with different type of programs. Here we, we go. This is my time, and if I cut myself, I'm cutting myself in Israel. If I bleed on a rock, I'm bleeding in Israel. I, I've left something there, and they give me something. I get more out of it than I give. So if somebody hasn't been to Israel before, and they, well, they're not going to really get to see much of Israel, are they? Would they have to, like, how long? Well, first, I guess, how long is, how long is the trip for? Program. You, program. We have one, two, and three-week programs. We start out at 17 years old. They could go with their parents on a, tr on a program. We, go, we have college-age kids, up to, as I said, 90, that, that go on their own. They look at our, our website, and they're able to look up the schedule, and then they could, they could pick and choose which programs they would like. We also have a college age where we're setting up programs that are during intercession. So if they're working during the summer, they could probably go in January. Right. So could somebody go, so you can go there and do a week for the Volunteers for Israel and then do a tour for, the, for, for another week and, and make it a two-week uh, two trip? Yes, you and I know that the Chabad is planning a program to go to Israel. Okay, that, that's great. So we're trying to hook up and say to those people that are going on the trip, why don't you stay an extra week or two? Right. And be part yeah, of the you're, program. You're already there. You already paid your... Uh, exactly. You already paid your... So... so let me ask, why do, why do people go? And you know, when you talk to people, what's the reason that you're finding that, that they go? They go because of the love of, of Israel. They go to show support. Look, a, a, an Israeli soldier or anyone in Israel can pick up the paper and look, and every day there's negative stories about Israel. Every day, every paper runs them. 
where there we go and people go and this is what what I hear because they want to show them that that's not all of the people of the world and we're non-sectarian we we have people from all over the world so this is not just for religious Jews or not even is it not even for Jews if somebody says hey I love it I mean a lot of people who aren't Jewish uh, a lot of people you know support uh, the state of Israel can they go to yes we try to to uh, really control uh, groups that want to go that that, that uh, believe in proselytizing to the people in Israel we don't want that to happen uh, if you do that's an automatic dismissal from the program they bring you to the gate they they mm -hmm. escort you out and you're on your own mm -hmm. uh, and it's even it's even Jews that, that do that uh, uh, there was a singer one number of years ago Metis Yahu he was a reggae singer and uh, he was part of Chabad and the kids didn't hear about him and they didn't know about his music so what I did was I bought a, a CD and on the bus coming back from uh, Shabbat I put it on now he's singing about Hashem very innocently I, I did that and I didn't realize that it was that and uh, the, the, the group leader had to take it out of the, the uh, CD player I didn't get in any trouble at that point but uh, she said you, you can't play that so I gave it to one of them and that was it so how many people are in each group we can have 20 people go at a time from all over the country we can have 10 people go at a time we're not an organized group until we get to Ben Gurion Airport that's when we become organized and we're set up into different groups uh, it used to be that we would try to put people that are going to meet at the same airport Kennedy Airport or in Miami or California and try to make them go the same flight that was too difficult so we stopped that and whoever goes on the date that you're supposed to go and meet at Ben Gurion Airport those they'll go there on their own the other thing that, that we do is we say to people go a week earlier if you would like to tour and then the day of your program beginning go on uh, go to Ben Gurion so is this is a program only for Americans because you mentioned an umbrella group no it, it's a worldwide program we are the only organization in the world that hooks up with Sorel but we call ourselves volunteers for Israel the rest of the world uh, says they call themselves Sorel we didn't want to do that according to our bylaws we wanted to offer people that from America different type of programs not just to work uh, with Sorel but if they wanted to work in a nursing home or if they wanted to work in in a hospital we had that at one time but that was more expensive because they didn't get free room and board right so this I think you met you mentioned children in the 80s but women no problem too can, women can volunteer also yeah so a family if a, could a family go and say hey you know the husband and wife two kids they can all go together would they be housed together or would they be separated 17 year old you can't go with younger than 17 okay oh I'm sorry you could go at 15 okay. but not 17 with a family but they're not housed men and women are separated okay but you'll be with your family so the, the on the same father. base yeah oh yeah. they've been the same base but, but not in the same unit not, not in the same unit no. great if, so, if there are females they could be together and males could be together but not together great great well it's very, I mean it sounds like a great trip and I'm sure you know uh, you have memories that last, last a lifetime somebody wants to to learn more about this where would they go to get the information volunteers for Israel dot org and they'll see our uh, website and if they live here because we're on Long Island then I guess then you'll be the person who gets in touch with them and yes there's and someone else there's a regional director that will get in touch with them and give them all this information great great every good, very very interesting and it sounds like a, a great program anything you want to throw in the last uh, the last minute yeah just for for, for laughs uh, sometimes th th there there are no bathrooms in the barracks uh, so at night two o'clock in the morning you have to go to the bathroom you have to bring a flashlight and find the bathroom sometimes but it's all fun you you have to be like a duck 
with the water rolling right mm -hmm. off your back. Just laugh at everything. Don't you? We think that we could do things better than the Israeli army. Do it for while you're there. Listen to them, and that's it. And you'll have fun. You'll enjoy it. You'll meet the people. You'll you'll create friendships and bonds, hopefully for a lifetime. Great, Eric. Thank you very much for coming on the show. A lot of information, but there was a lot more to get out, and they can go to the website and get all that. And, yes, sir. Uh, and meet with a volunteer. I'm Gary Jacobs, and thank you for joining us on Long Island Backstory, and we'll see you next week. Long Island Backstory is made possible in part by Americans for Legal Reform, the oldest, most successful legal group in the world. P.O. Box 2679, Huntington Station, New York 11746. Telephone 631-421-6390. Website Americans, the number four, legalreform.com. Long Island Backstory.